Mina, come on, why? Jesus freaking gamer here. Back with more Psalms. Going to be in the Psalms for quite a while. This time we're looking at Psalm 11. Going to read verses 1 through 3. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? That is a very solemn warning. In essence, why are you telling me to flee? Look, the wicked man, he's getting ready to attack. Why am I going to flee? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? One mistake I think the church and Christians make a lot when evil rises up, when it um, bends its ugly head. I think that's the proper saying. Maybe not, but anyway, you know what I'm getting at. When those things happen... That's not the time to retreat. God is the God of victory. Jesus Christ already won the entire thing on the cross and the resurrection, very importantly as far as victory goes. Staying dead in the grave would not have been so victorious, but rising from the dead, raising himself from the dead, <clears throat> you don't get much stronger and more victorious than that. Death itself is overcome. When the, when the uh, wicked are doing wickedly, when they're getting ready to attack, when they are planning things that are wrong and evil and ungodly and anti-biblical, that is the time for Christians to stand up, not bow down. It's the time for Christians to attack back, not go away. And I, again, this is I'm not referring to anything physical here. Um, especially in the United States, we have law enforcement, police, the National Guard, the armed forces, if need be, to come into an area and occupy a zone if some horrible crises were to arise. In other countries... That would be another case, and that is a sermon for another day. The rise of wickedness usually isn't just some brutal, hostile takeover. It's not usually with guns and arms and military force. It's usually like, just to give some examples, um, back when abortion was legalized in the 1970s. I really wonder what the church did when the Supreme Court handed down that verdict. Did they... To the church, I, I sure a few Christians at least stood up and said, hey, those are babies you're killing there. That's wrong. Did the church overall take action? I don't know. When homosexuals came up and said, hey, what we're doing should be acceptable and right, did the Christians just go ahead and go along with it? Or did they actually stand up and say, you know, homosexuality is an abomination to God. It's a sexual aberration. It shouldn't be tolerated. It's not acceptable. It's wrong. A lot of churches, I, I, I know a little bit about that. I know that a whole lot of churches split on that topic. Some churches saying, no, the word of God's a little bit on the old side. We just need to, we just need to love people. If they want to do that, let them do that. And then the other side of the church said, or at least some of the churches said, no, this is a sin. This is wrong. This should not be allowed. <clears throat> I was, I was like, what other issues can we talk about? What else does the Bible stand up for that society has accepted and said? The society is like, yeah, this is fine. Culture said this is okay. The Bible says this is wrong. The church should follow up with the exact same thing and say, no, this is wrong. I would go so far as to say even in countries where, we don't, where you don't have the freedom that we have in the United States, if you see something wrong, still stand up. As a Christian, say, I'm a Christian. And my God says that that's wrong. I don't care if the culture says it's okay. I don't care if the culture says it's acceptable. I won't do it, and I will speak out against it because my God says it is wrong. Some Christians in the United States, back to my country, have gotten it right. I don't feel like a whole lot have. Even the ones who don't actively preach against those things, and I do believe. I don't know how many times I've said in the past. I, think of, I know I've said it for myself. And I think I might have said once or twice in regards to the church. I think the church's place really should, they should stand up and be the moral high ground and say, not just abortion, homosexuality, um, political talk points, but on any other issue where society or culture is going away from God. They should stand up and say, you know what, this is wrong. This is not okay. This is not acceptable. We love you. But please understand, we will not tolerate this sinful, atrocious behavior. And the Bible says that our God is the God of victory. In Him we can overcome. He's already won the battle. There's no reason for not for us to stand up and fight. And if we incur the wrath and the ire of the culture, if the people who are not saved decide to say, you know what? 
we don't like Christians very much. We're going to start attacking them in some way. We're going to start, you know, talking bad about them. We're going to start gossiping about them. We're going to start cutting them off from certain social conventions. At that point, well, in, Amer in America, thank God we have the right to actually take legal action if something, if we ourselves are discriminated against. But even if you can't take legal action, still stand up for God. Still choose to do what is right. It's not easy down here on earth sometimes to be righteous, to be just, to stand for the things that God stands up for. What I can say, though, is it is worth it. Your testimony is worth it. And when you stand before God, not only will you get a reward, but even down here when you stand before the lost, you will provoke ire. You'll provoke wrath from them. But some people will stand up and take notice and say, you know what, that Christian, he, we don't like him very much and we disagree with what he's saying, but he's bold. He's strong. He doesn't back down at the very least. He, he really does stand up for his God. His God is dumb. He's dumb. But he stands up for those dumb things he believes in. And you know what? If that's your testimony, that's a good testimony. Stand up for those things because your God has forgotten you. Your God sees you. And just to kind of read a little bit more from that chapter down to verse 4, The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals. Fire and brimstone and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Your God has not forgotten you. He's right there with you. And even though sometimes you do have to suffer for His name's sake, in the end, the victory's His. And as Christianity throughout history over and over again has won, even nowadays, when in some areas and in some places it just seems to not be winning, keep serving Him. Keep believing in Him. The victory is yours. The victory is His. When Jesus died on the cross, it looked like a horrible defeat. Three days later, He rose again. Now, I don't, most of us, if any of us, will not rise from the dead to see our accomplishments, but we will be in heaven, and we will see the ultimate victory that God has achieved for us. So stand up for Him now, because if the, righteous, if the foundations are torn down, where will the righteous go? While the foundations remain, even if they're crooked, cragging and crumbling. Let's stand up for him, church. Let's do our best to stand up for our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible that he gave us, his love letter to us, and the truth that he loves, and he himself will defend, and he wants to do it through us. Guys, it's a little bit of a long message. Thank you for hanging in there with me through the entire thing. I love you, and God bless.